Yeah. So we all know primary angioplasty. What is primary angioplasty? So this is not a new thing. It is there for last 12, 15 years in our early days. Uh, 2001 or 2 we used to uh, uh, listen about primary angioplasty. 2002, 3 we started at primary angioplasty. So I will be discussing what is new in primary angioplasty. So angio primary angioplasty, you need to have a like a setup where you have a full team of cardiologists, cardiac surgeon, cardiac anesthetist will be there. And this is the problem which we deal in, uh, uh, like uh, heart attack. This is this uh, thrombus which is operating the vessel. And meta analysis of 23 randomized trials also very conclusively that thrombolysis is not comparable to primary angioplasty. From primary angioplasty is far, far, far better. Provided we are doing uh, uh, like angioplasty between three to twelve hours. And why there is so much difference? Why primary angioplasty is much better than uh, thrombolysis? So you see, when we thrombolyze the patient, only sixty-five percent of patients have a TV three flow, and ninety percent of patients with primary PCI have a TV three flow. And this is the time dependent the time dependence you see when we do a, a thrombolysis. The effect, efficacy of thrombolysis drastically reduces after 3 hours. So even if we are matching in within 24 or 12 hours we are doing thrombolysis, we are not going to get the same benefit what we do when we, get benefit, uh, when we do uh, thrombolysis in less than 3 hours. So there is a huge difference. After 3, eight, three hours, the efficacy of thrombolysis goes down markedly. But primary angioplasty, the efficacy, efficacy remains till 12 hours, 24 hours. So after 3 hours, you have a patient Please go for primary angioplasty, send the patient to a centenary primary angioplasty that is there. Because I see after five to six hours, it is just a thrombolysis, just a, you know, you feel better, but the patient is not going to benefit a lot. So these are the factors. In angioplasty, we are not taking care of only thrombus reduction, but we are taking care of plaque rupture, internal hemorrhage, dissection, scar, everything. We take care by putting stain there. So, besides this, we also know that how many arteries are blocked. If the patient is going to be in cardiac shock or not in the near future. So we take care of everything very fast. Also the side effects are very less. In hemorrhage, like if we between thrombolysis, chances of infection is very high. But with primary angioplasty, it is far, far less. Almost nearly you. So I will come straight to the uh, cases. So you see, this is the uh, patient who came enteral MI within four hours. And here there is a LED which should come like this, totally up to date. What we do, if we pass a wire, now you see there is a fluid tickling down. This is the thrombus aspiration catheter, that we call a thrombus step. And you see after the thrombo thrombosection, you can see the LED is flowing. And then we put a stent. There is a stent deployment. And this is the result. So this primary angioplasty we have been doing for the last 10 years. We will just discuss in 5 minutes what is new in primary angioplasty. <coughs> new approach in primary angioplasty, now there is a pharmacoinvasive strategy. Use of new antiplatelets, use of devices like MGAR, decision making. Sometimes we, you know, we are stuck in a position, I will just discuss one of the cases. And then there is a radial rule. Now we use the arm for angioplasty, not the groin. Where the patient, you know, you give a lot of heparin, lot of GP2V3A, lot of antiplatelets, and then the patient come with a big hematoma after uh, 15 days, 20 days. He is unable to walk. So all these are changing. Now the primary angioplasty is much safer. We have more alternatives. And now we use the hand for angioplasty, even in heart attack. So pharmacoinvasive approach, we all know. Uh, uh, when we don't have a facility of primary angioplasty, we take a patient, we get a patient, we thrombolize, and within 24 hours, these patients are being sent to a center where you see facilities available. And then a pharmacoinvasive approach is taken. Like once thrombolysis, there is a TB2 or TB3 flow. At any center where angioplasty is being done, patient comes and we see angiogram and we do the, if there is a rescue response, we do angioplasty. So pharmacoinvasive strategy is much in vogue. Especially in our center, in our country, it is, it is very, very, you know, uh, common that we get a lot of patients who have been thrombolyzed. And these are the newer antiplatelets. With clopidogrel, you see 30% of the patients are resistant. So many of the patients come with stent thrombus and you know many problems. Uh, we feel that we are giving dual antiplatelet, but these patients often after three days, four days, one month, two months, they come with SAG and everything. So 
newer interpreters like Prasadul and Packetulam, they have reduced these problems to very minimum, very minimum, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, incidents. And this was the very last trial, Triton Dimitri trial, in which Prasadul was far better in reducing cardiovascular death, MI stroke, as compared to Prasadul, and bleeding risk were almost equal. And this was this. You see, it stands from most chances far far less. 2.35 percent versus 1.13 percent.